Now, welcome back to Property Matters on Dublin South FM with myself, Carol Tallon. You can contact us on Twitter or at iPropertyRadio or email hello at iPropertyRadio.com. I'm now joined by Craig Mulcahy, CEO of Construction Boss. Craig, you've been with us before, but that's a good 18 months ago. A lot happens in 18 months. You're very welcome. Yeah, yeah. It's been a very quick 18 months, I have to say. I feel like time is flying by at the moment. But uh, no, it's great to be on the show again. Great. Well, Craig, remind people, um, because the last time we spoke, you were still in startup mode with Construction Boss, and that's Construction BOS. Mm. Um, so you were still very yeah. much in startup mode, but I, I understand that that's moved on a bit. So maybe for the benefit of listeners um, who missed you the first time around, you might just explain what Construction Boss is and what it does. Yeah, so so what we do is um, we're a cloud-based CRM built specifically for construction companies. Uh, we work across Ireland and the UK. Um, we're kind of niche in a certain way that there isn't really any people out there doing specific construction CRM configurations. So our skill set is quite unique. But we also have um, strong partnerships with CIS in Ireland and Barbara ABI over in the UK who supply construction data to uh, construction companies. And uh, we tie in and integrate with those construction data providers, making it uh, quite seamless for them to to use our CRM. Very good. Uh, actually, the last time that you were on, you were on the show, I think you had just actually kicked off um, that that uh, CIS integration. And obviously, CIS is such a, is such an integral service here in Ireland for construction mm. companies. Um, so you you might just talk us through the actual benefits as in how how your software sorts through the information? Yeah, I suppose like our, our relationship with CIS has probably been going on for about four or five years, even in the past company that I was in. So we actually set up their initial CRM system that they use to, to manage their sales process as well. But um, when we first started working with them before there was APIs or anything to work with, um, we were basically taking their, their data off sheets and importing them manually into CRM systems, which was a huge laborsome task. Um, but now what we've developed is basically a web app called Construction Boss Fusion. And what Construction Boss Fusion does is it effectively takes data from CIS, from your data provider. So if you're subscribed to a certain data set, so say it was just Republic of Ireland data, all that information will be displayed in our web app. We take it one step further. Our web app sits on top of any CRM system, so not just our own CRM system, but any CRM system. So, what we were having, what we were having a lot, of t- a lot of the time is we were going into clients. They were really liking what we were all about, what we did, but they might have already heavily invested in, in, in cloud systems. So they might have already heavily invested in Microsoft Dynamics or Salesforce, and they just didn't even want to go there with with with, with switching. And um, so we we thought maybe rather than challenging them and trying to get them to change it, then why not work with them? So that's where Construction Boss uh, Fusion kind of came from. So that sits on top of Salesforce or Microsoft Dynamics and, and lets you integrate with your construction data. Uh, there's a really good startup lesson in there. You know, one of the things that we've noticed across the, um, more so the prop tech rather than the pure construction tech, we've really seen maybe a lack of willingness to come together. So what you end up with are a lot of disjointed solutions. And unfortunately, the marketplace yeah. doesn't want that. So actually, it's not no. always the best solution wins out. It's definitely the most convenient or whoever has their foot in the door uh, when it comes to any sort of investment, because chances are a company will have spent many months, if not years, uh, deciding what course of um digital transformation you know what what software is to to include how that yeah. works and we've already issued training but where i i suppose in terms of your business model then how did that impact on that yeah i mean it, it, we're kind of fortunate with covid to a certain extent because because there was probably a lack of work uh, when COVID first came out, people were afraid to spend money. We were afraid to spend money as well. Uh, we weren't taking on any staff. We were doing salary reductions. We were doing the same as everyone else was out there because there was uncertainty. No one knew what was ahead. But it was actually a great time for us because it really fo- focused our, our efforts into going, okay, what can we do during this period? And we decided, okay, we're going to develop this new web app. We've got lots of time to do it. Let's see if we can do it. And um, that's kind of where it went from there. It's just kind of grown legs, pretty much. It's a never-ending story, effectively. 
Well, look, that's that's generally the nature of um, innovation. You, it, it never ends. Actually, I, I think that that is maybe it, it's one of the joys and one of the values of it, but it's also one of the points of frustration, actually, for companies who are a little bit stuck in their ways or who might have a very uh, large number of uh, people they need to get through in order to make innovative yeah. projects happen um, or come to life. You know, it just th that there is no end date, that actually the cycle continues because yeah. it is an iterative, an iterative uh, process by design. Mm. Um, but over well, the last 11 months, you know, how how have you seen the traditional industry? Um, because you're very well placed, actually, maybe to look at mm -hmm. firms that would not be hugely innovative, but perhaps understand the value of um, of your system separating data that actually feeds into their business development goals. So therefore, it's a priority. Um, so in, in terms of the 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 construction industry, I'm sure I would have asked yeah. you that question the last time, but I'll ask it again. You know, where, how big is the gap between the traditional players and those that have actually embraced more innovative solutions and that are, you know, increasing their reliance on technology? It's, it's, it's huge. And like, we were, we were in a fortunate position that, you know, because you're a startup and you're small, you can pivot, you can change your business quite quickly. And you can just, you know, everyone's in the same room or everyone's, you know, at the end of a phone call. With bigger companies, you know, making changes quickly just doesn't happen. You can't do that sort of thing. But the positive side of COVID is it forced a lot of these businesses to change. Like a lot, a lot of businesses that we deal with are still managing on pieces of paper. They're still managing on spreadsheets. They've got uh, out-of-date stock management systems that uh, anytime they want something change, it's going to cost them 10 grand. Um, so... It's, it's really forced their hands to go, okay, we need to do something about this. A lot of the, the, the other, what we're seeing as well is in, in a lot of the companies, the construction industry is a little bit older. Um, there's not as many young people going into sales roles and kind of um, young engineering roles in construction companies. It is a a, an older workforce. A lot of the people, you know, that are coming out of college because of the way Dublin is based and the way Ireland is based, they're going to tech companies. Uh, they're going to Salesforce, they're going to Microsoft, Google, the Amazons. That's where they're all going. So um, what's happening now is the construction industry, from what I can see, is uh, it, it's very old. Uh, but that's going to change um, drastically, I'd say. You know, you've hit on two really important points. Um, you know, yes, it's it, an aging demographic in this. And by the way, I never associate age with innovation. I always believe if you're innovative at 18, you'll be innovative, you know, well into your 80s. That's just, it, it's generally more mindset. And I've seen people, you know, in their first five years out of university that really struggled to learn, new, you know, a, a new way of doing things. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I agree that it's an older population. However, you know, I, I think that because there's an entrepreneurial mindset there, that usually comes mm. hand in hand with an innovative with an innovative mindset, but there are just challenges um, if the tech looks overly complex. But actually, when you break it down, yeah. if you separate tech and innovation, I actually think the construction industry um, at an individual level is quite innovative. Just technology, it, it, it's not shown through technology, and that's what needs to change. And I think maybe that's why it's been a laggard mm. in the past. But in terms of the new generation yeah. coming in, I mean, the CIF and certainly, um, you know, through apprenticeship schemes and some of the larger players in the traditional sector, they've really tried to position construction as um, a, a, a good future career option for people with an interest in uh, data science and technology and, you know, different mm -hmm. roles that maybe weren't associated with construction before. So I think that's really interesting that you're finding people with those skill sets even though they're badly needed in construction they're not coming into the construction industry that's a bit of a disconnect no yeah definitely for sure and i think the people that do come into it are coming in by mistake or that's that, that's generally what's happening listen our integration with cis is kind of like the first step it's what gets us in the door it's what gets people interested in what we're all about what we're really about is, you know, transforming the way that they do their business. So moving them away from spreadsheets, put them on a cloud system, helping them out with marketing automation, switching their stock management systems, giving them an advanced kind of reporting tool to work with, and, and giving them kind of less complicated ways to do project management. A lot of the time, the companies that we're dealing with are fine on the sales side. 
where I'm seeing a lot of companies struggle is actually on the doing of the work, which might be, you know, if, for example, say you're a window company and uh, you had external fitters to fit your windows uh, and internal fitters, it's managing that process of how it gets done efficiently. And especially now during COVID, how, how do you get that done when no one's in an office? So that's, that's, that's the big question that's getting asked of us at the moment and something that we're kind, kind of trying to solve. You know, in a way, that's almost back to the very core function of contractors, mm -hmm. which is project management. You know, sometimes that gets lost um, when you when you look at the construction industry through too wide a lens. You forget that actually the core yeah. skill that a contractor brings is the project management and the ability to bring people in on projects, manage them efficiently yeah. to get the best. So essentially, mm -hmm. um, you know, the 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 process is worth more than some of its parts and that's a core project yeah. management skill but in terms of the technology you know i get it if people are still using you know um you know uh, pens and paper and and uh, old school databases like that but how are those how are those businesses continuing to win tenders you know the procurement process has become so difficult over the past decade you know how how is the market not weeding out people who aren't keeping pace and firms that aren't keeping pace because there isn't that many people that are, are keeping pace from what i'm seeing and what i'm going out and doing even in these lar large companies that i'm going into they're they're not keeping up with the pace at all um and, and it's 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 evident really um i don't know how how, how you switch it to be honest but to be honest i think project management systems that are out there that are cloud-based are too complicated and you almost need a degree in project management to even get your head around it and then if you're a smaller company as well and you want to get your head around it you need to employ someone that's you know good in project management i really think we need to make it simpler and easier for the end user and that's 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 our biggest thing it's okay taking out what are the milestones what are the tasks when do they need to get done who needs to do them that's it really we don't need over complicated gantt charts the only time gantt charts ever get used is to win projects that's why i kind of find but no one actively sticks to their Gantt chart. Um, yeah. And people that do, I, I wouldn't believe them, to be completely honest. Um, but I, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not sure how, uh, yeah. how, 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 how we force change more, more than anything. You know, that, that's quite a disheartening view. You know, could it be, because I work through PropTech Ireland, we work uh, through uh, uh, digital construction. So we're probably seeing the the people who are not just uh living up to best practice and delivering best practice but actually the probably we're probably seeing the people who are setting best practice so from that point mm. of view do you think maybe i am a little skewed in in my my uh judgment as to how far along the digital transformation journey the majority of the construction sector in ireland is yeah, well, definitely, I would say the prop tech sector is ahead, but the construction sector is 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 behind. Uh, and if they have implemented systems, they haven't been implemented properly. Um, like one of the biggest issues with implementing any sort of cloud software is there's no such thing as really off the shelf. Um, if you want something off the shelf, then you better be prepared to set it up the right way. Because if it doesn't get set up the right way at the beginning, then it won't get used properly. Um, so a lot of the time what's happening is people are buying off the shelf software and expecting them to fix the problem straight away. But really what you need is um, someone with a certain key skill set to come in and set it up for your business and understand your business. Uh, and I think that's really important. And I think one thing that we kind of try to say to people is, listen, you have to move to the cloud because if you don't, all that information that you have, is you're, getting, you're losing it with someone. So it's, it's all stuck in someone's head. It's stuck in someone's computer. Um, it's, 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 it's just a no-brainer to move towards it. And yeah. it just makes it so much easier. If, if someone's leaving an organization uh, for someone else taking on someone else's role to kind of pick up the breadcrumbs of where it's at. Yeah, I look, it's a huge point of vulnerability. And I think uh, traditional firms themselves know this. I, I think they understand where they're vulnerable in terms of key staff members. Um, Craig, in terms mm. of construction, boss, how active are you outside of the Irish market? Yeah, so... 70% of our business is now in the UK. It's very much our key target market at the moment. And um, there's more appetite to spend there. Deals seem to close a little bit faster. I kind of feel in Ireland, you can kind of uh, get kicked down the road a little bit with 
yeah, yeah, we'll look at that, but uh, m- maybe next quarter, next quarter, give me a ring. They're just not, <laughs> they won't give you a hard no. Uh, I think, I think any, I any startup listening in today who's actually trying to sell in any solution for the built environment will be nodding along to that. It, it, just in terms yeah. of decision making, it's slow. Uh, but then, so you have a really good sense of, you know, where Ireland sits, you know, even in terms of the UK market. Yeah, uh, we're, we're behind the UK market for sure. Um, we've always have been behind the UK market. We kind of copy whatever they do. That seems to be the trend and it hasn't changed at all. Um, but I am seeing some companies, um, definitely, you know, the likes of um, Manic up, 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 up in the cabin, they're, they're, they're making massive digital trends. and They're, they're a great company. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of work with them at the moment with their, with their CRM systems. Um, but they're, they're one, one company definitely to look at as an example of someone that's doing some really good um, digital transformation at the moment. Yeah. So it's then, not all doom and gloom for me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Well, look, tell us about your pipeline for 2021, because obviously, you know, back in, last September, I don't think we could have imagined that we would be here still under these heavy restrictions in February. So, I mean, how is that impacting? Because Construction Boss is still a relatively young business. You know, how is your pipeline for 2021 looking? Yeah, I suppose at the end of last summer, what what we did, what we decided to do is we started working with a telemarketing company in the UK and we kept it niche. So they were a telemarketing company that specialized in selling into the construction industry. They had no experience of selling SaaS-based products, but they're, they're, their kind of people that they worked with were the same people that we wanted to talk to. We were also really, really fortunate that they were also partnered with CIS and Barber. So they knew the exact sort of people we wanted to get. Uh, so we started doing a few campaigns with them and uh, listen, a few really, really good leads came in. And through our own kind of outbound marketing and leads coming in from CIS and Barber ABI, uh, we, were, we actually managed to have a very, very good, strong pipeline by the, by the end of Q4. And um, January, uh, January this were this month, two thousand twenty-one. Not this month, last month. Jesus, my brain is not working fully at the, the moment. Year, was the our year best is month flying. ever. <laughs> Everything's a fuzz at the moment, but uh, no, January was our best month ever. So, um, which has been fantastic. Uh, we're growing uh, quite a lot at the moment. We've got four new people starting. Um, probably by the end of March, it looks like, uh, with another four probably to start uh, by by the end of summer. Um, so they're kind of job mixing across kind of customer onboarding to um, software development to sales jobs. So no, it's 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 been good. Um, it's been a long time getting there, but um, yeah, it's nice to actually break even and start moving forward. Yeah, look, um, startups they're they're not for the for the faint of heart, but um, look that that's the nature no. of it. The only thing is, there's a lot of potential in this industry because there's a lot more that still needs to change. So continued yeah. success to yourself and the team there. Uh, that was Craig Mulcahy, CEO of Construction Boss. We'll be back after the quick break.